Well, I'm going to take my daughter's advice because they said to me on vacation, I like to talk to people when I'm out. Just random combos. Yeah, I'm that guy. I'm talker guy. Okay. I went up to Steven Stamkos at this little place called Hyde Park, and I go, hey, Stammer, how are you? He goes, oh, dog, good to see you. And we had a little man-to-man -man hockey chat. <laughs> <laughs> so we had a little man-to-man -man hockey chat. Yeah. And afterwards, I walk away, and my daughters go, can you stop being a loser? He, uh, this is what they said. That Stankhouse guy didn't even want to talk to you. And I go, girls, it's First okay. First of all. So anyway, that was just a manly chat down in Florida. And today, try to be nice, and I try to have fun with people. Whenever I see somebody with a Montreal Canadiens hat in the Toronto area, I try to just say something like, mm. hey, what's up with that hat? I went to Canadian Tire today. I saw a guy with a toque, Canadian's toque, and I go, hey, what's with the Habs toque? This guy laid into me en français. No way. Yes. Wow. And I just walked away and I said, that's it. I'm that's going, great. I'm going with my daughter's advice and I'm just not going to try to, you know. I see. I support your daughters in this. Jonas Siegel's in here. Good to see you, Jonas. I don't know where you stand on this. You you know those commercials where it's like you can't help yourself. You're, you're eventually going to evolve into your parents. You know what I mean? Like you, when you're a kid, you realize – okay, what are my parents doing? And then when you get to that point in that stage of your life, you're a lot like my dad. That's exactly what my dad would do. He my likes dad, to chitter chat. My dad will talk to everybody. <laughs> and it's, and, and my dad I'm, too. Not, my I'm not wired that way. My sisters aren't wired that way. My mom's not like, we'll be in an ele elevator, the five of us and one stranger. And that guy just wants to look at his phone and my dad will start a conversation. And then we get off. We're like, why are you bothering that guy? That's it's, what my daughter said. You're bothering I, No, I say, it's not bothering people. It's they, bothering people. It isn't. They like the chitter chatter. You're out no, about. No, that guy just proved to you. Yes, you might bat like 500 half the time. Now Stamkos is different. He but knows dude, who you are. What's wrong? Of me you, of hey, all. Where, how are you finding Stamkos randomly in Tampa? Dude, there's this that's place a, called. That's a better. They story. had a day off, and I brought my family there. He was with his kids, and I just. You know, I'm getting a lot of I DM responses, so I said, hey, Stammer. And I like, got you. I'm like, I got my kids, my wife. I'm like, please recognize me and please know who I am. Yeah. And then, because I've been, when I was a moose, you shake somebody's hand, they're like, who are you again? <laughs> <laughs> there's like, there's no way. Are that you a wrestler? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are uh, you like Butterbean or something? <laughs> yeah. Is there but it was just polite conversation. And they're like, stop talking to people. Wait, okay. this guy just basted me, man, with yeah. the abs hat. In French, too. That's disappointing. Yeah, and maybe, all I heard but maybe he knew that you're Jeff O'Neill, the former Leaf, and he's like, no, wait a minute. I no, dude, nothing it had to do nothing with to do with it. He went on, and I don't know en français, he went on about how great the hat, because I could tell Montreal Canadiens and the Leafs are this and that, and he was pissed. And I'm like, yeah. dude, I just walked away. I said, I'm, I just tried to have some fun. Yeah, it's wild, man. Like, it's, uh, I don't know what to tell are you. Are you not I, chatting I, public, guy? Not at all. Yeah, Joe, you're not like, wired that way. Let me ask way. you this. When you sit on a but plane. Let me hang on a second wait. here. When your dad does it, why do you guys say to your dad, why do you need to do that? Well, because we, pleasantries, we've, no, man. because we've had those type of scenarios before where the other person gets hourly and then it's awkward for everybody. And I'm yes. like, why did you spark the conversation? It was totally unnecessary. It was no one needed to get into the conversation with with well, Joe what Blow, is your old man who's in say? our life for what thirty your seconds? Old, why, what is your old man saying? Why are you wearing Crocs with socks? No, if you say it's not something that like kind of that. Stuff. But no, it's it's. But he he'd have the same reaction. Oh, Habs fan. It would be the same kind of thing from the <laughs> from the right place like being nice being cordial yeah. not being rude whatsoever you know my dad he, he's not being confrontational he's just trying to spark a conversation or being nice and half the time he'll get a great response the other half he might get blown off and then you're sitting there watching this transaction and you're like what was the point of that if you're gonna so, bet 500 I don't why, know, dude. why I even, have, why I even step out of the box you. so when you get on a plane and you sit down and you're sitting with someone you don't know do you start chatting? Absolutely. Oh, Never. That's hate my worst that. nightmare. <laughs> oh, You're, I no. would hate to fly with you. I uh, The idea of... So, I've hey, so been, where are you going? We, well, but hang on a sec. What's wrong with this? And Doogie, we're going to get to some sports in a minute. What's wrong with this? If you're on a plane next to somebody and they bring out the snacks and the other person's enjoying the snacks, you could say, isn't that a good snack? What's wrong with that? <laughs> no. See, I want nothing oh, to no. do with anyone on a flight. No, Me too. Nothing to do with anybody. Don't want to talk? I don't want to talk to anybody. I want to stare at the back of the What seat. about your server at a restaurant? Are you chatting? Guys, I know you guys view me as a miserable 
person that doesn't want to deal with anything. But out in public, I got a vibe to me where it's just like, hey, how's it going? You are Larry Where'd David. you get those yeah. shoes? What? What? You're the king, king of Kensington, man. You're walking around, you're pointing at people, little stop and chats, and good for you. Listen, that's great. I, I support it. Whatever makes you happy, I guess go do your thing. But I, I guess my point is I don't want to open that door because you don't know what's on the other yeah. side of that door all the time. So let me ask you this. And if somebody tries to bring up small talk, you just put your head down. No, I, like I'm you. never rude about it. But you try to end it as quickly as possible. But I will make it known after a while that <laughs> it's a scenario where I'm not – yeah. in the mood to talk during this three-hour flight with someone that I don't know and I'm not going to know or see ever again the second we leave this plane. I'm all about, hey, how are you? How you doing? If there's a stop and check, go ahead. If you know somebody, if someone's a fan, we are public yep. figures, I will always stop and talk. That's and how fine. Are you? I will, as soon going? as the door closes on a four-hour flight, I will chat up the dude oh, beside man. me for the whole flight until see, that thing puts on the brakes and pulls into the uh, I just had a scenario like this. All right. <laughs> oh, so, JP, as if you don't talk to people. J JP, I don't think JP's talking to anybody. But we're a family of four. So if we can, we'll get, you know, the, obviously, yes. We'll get the three seats and then the one seat on the aisle. The flight home from Florida, we couldn't get that. So I had the single ahead, like two aisles ahead. The guy beside me had a little dog with him, and then the woman beside him was enamored with the dog. And right off the bat, they start talking, and she's right in there. I had That's nothing to do That's just as bad. With. You didn't pet the dog? I didn't even look at the dog. I didn't ask about the dog. I, I opened up my magazine, and I started reading. And that's what I did. And I was, it's not rude. There's nothing wrong with that. It's not, an, it, it's not antisocial because it's not a social environment. Yeah, right? I would have to hold That's back. Not, I would have to hold back looking at you saying, oh, what? You don't like the dog? <laughs> my thing is, it's your dog. I, I don't care. Yeah, it's not my world, man. And, and that other woman, you, someone else is very enamored with the dog. You're willing to talk about your dog, and there's an introduction, and hey, what's the backstory? Where are you going? All that kind of stuff. I'm not going down that road. I have no personal interest in doing that. That's just me, but I think the world, it's probably split in two. Doogie, you're a younger dude. Do you not think a guy that doesn't want to socialize with anyone in public is just an ignorant pig? <laughs> I think so. It's yes, kind of weird. thank oh, you. God. Thank you, dude. I think socialize. you need to throw Try up a Try to pole. have a vibe to you, man. Enjoy Again, life. Get up. If it's a social environment, I'm not going to a wedding and staring at the wall. You sit down. You sit at a wedding table. Hey, how are you, Bill? Hey, what's up, John? What's your name, Karen? And you talk. But if it's but not people you know, you're not If I'm on the TTC going downtown, I'm not saying, hey, how are you? Where what are you, you doing? Oh, are you going downtown, too? Like that, that to me is is psychotic. You should be in a home somewhere. I think you need. To I be love studied. it, man. I think it's bothering it. people, and I think it's completely unnecessary. Dude, what I'll do is I'll go a step further. I'll start panning to see who wants to get involved. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I'll be like, you're a no. You want to chat? What do you yeah. want to chat about? Okay. You want to least talk? I'll do anything right. like that. I love it. All right. Well, there you are. You're a man of the people. Okay. I, I am. I am very cordial to everyone. I am not rude to anybody. I will. Right. Absolutely say hello, how are you, is all that, right, Jonas? There's a difference not, between different. being rude yes. and being not yeah. in like, a position where you want to be conversational. I've heard you say conversational. when you get your hair cut, you don't want to chat. I prefer you just want to get to in, chat. get out. Yeah, exactly. Pleasantries. Yeah. How are how you? Are you? How's going how are the kids? How are you doing? Business is good. Busy in here. Awesome. And then we're good. Let's, Let's just get it done. Done. <laughs> and get out of here. <laughs> Um, actually, you know what happened to me? You're speaking of en français, leaving the, leaving Pearson today, we were going through customs and, uh, the customs officer, did you chat to them speaking in French, yeah. right? Which I guess it could go either way. Um, running through our family, un, deux, trois, quatre, and then passes over the sheets and goes, by the way, big fan of the show. <laughs> I'm like, no way. <laughs> Thank you. So we got the en français, we got the Pearson crew. We got a lot of things going right now. A lot of stuff. So going this on. is great. Um, all right, Jonas is in here. We got the Leafs in action tonight. It sounds like Samsonov's going to go. You guys read anything into Samsonov tonight? It's Joseph Wall right tomorrow? Yeah, like he He's has he established himself as the number one guy? Like tentative, right? We have too much history that we can't. He's not Vasilevsky, right? Right. Am I right? Well, don't tell Kuznetsov that. Like yeah. Kuznetsov is very, very upset that people in Toronto are too hard on... Ilya Samsonov. He said that on Saturday when he rolled through. What are you talking about? Did you about? not hear that comment? That's yeah, his on, boy. On though, right? I know. They were best friends in Washington. 
Samsonov was a disaster earlier in the year. What do you want people? I hate when players come in here and, and play that card. They know it's going to work because it's Toronto and there's a lot of fans. That will Everybody's say, got right. a message in Toronto. Yeah, every, exactly. And that's Kuznetsov, who the last thing he should be worried about is what's going on with Samsonov and what the Toronto media sure. is thinking. This guy's trying to basically salvage his career in Carolina. Although he played well the other night. He played well in the weekend, period. <laughs> Kuznetsov and Gensel are working out pretty well early and often for, for Carolina. But yeah, it seems like Sansonov, I guess if the playoffs were to start tonight, like that's the answer. I guess he's your game one starter. And I don't know how much of that is him grabbing it again, which to his credit is a pretty incredible story considering what did happen earlier in the year. And how much of it was Joseph Wall got injured and since he's come back, he just has not, he hasn't looked good enough. Like he hasn't been comfortable in net. And that's going to be the case right up until the playoffs. Yeah. Like if Samsonov That's it. it it's just like two horses going down the stretch where it's like yes. whichever one at the very end is there at the finish line is the one that's going to go into the playoffs. If Samsonov isn't very good tonight and Wall goes in tomorrow night and, and steals yep. the show, Change. then it's going to be like his net for a little bit and you're going yep. to continue to go. Yep. He just mentioned none of them are Vasilevsky, and that's the way the rotation is going to go. Yeah. And you just hope whatever guy is hot at the start of the playoffs, if one of them is, yeah. that they can do the job. Well, and even think ahead to the playoffs, he could start game one. He doesn't have a great game one. They might go to ball in game two. Like, See, that that to me is a disaster in the making. It's what they have, right? Well, like, is it a disaster in the making? Well, because if you're going in there with you have one bad game, you're like, you're okay, out? Like, let's, say, let's say he gives up seven or something. Which you're he like, did, I believe. Terrible. Didn't he yeah. do that game one he against did. Tampa last year? Yeah, but like, who was the backup, right? It's not this. You you can't see that scenario playing out? Like, well, it's possible. I, mean, I guess he it hasn't, is possible. Like, he's not, he doesn't earned it, right? Well, I mean, I guess he has, though, based on the fact that he keeps For getting right all these now. Starts. He's playing well. Why wouldn't they play him? Yeah, I mean, he's not coming off a great game the other night. He was good, but not great. Joseph Wall is going to play tomorrow. It doesn't really matter in the next two nights. And then they'll split the other someone one. Someone's going to play the back to back anyway. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And they're going to have more back to backs, and I think it'll be determined based on when they play Florida coming up. When they play Tampa, they got some. They got Edmonton on Saturday. That's a big platform game. I would assume Samsonov will play that. Well, did you read anything into Wall starting those two games against Boston? Because I thought that was like. Hmm. I, I looked at That's it. It's kind of interesting. I thought there was two ways to look at it, and I, I decided to lean the one way. It was either they're protecting Samson up for whatever reason – or they want to prop up Wall. They want Wall to take it. And that's that was my viewpoint, yeah. was we we want this guy to be the guy. We believe he's got it in him. But in order for him to do that, he's got to play Boston. He's got to beat Boston. He's got to go into Boston and be comfortable in those situations. And like that, those were two classic Leaf games where you can look at the goaltending, and Wall was not great in either game. Nope. But they scored two goals combined. Yeah. They, they lost 4-1, 4-1. He, but he was the second-best goalie. Yeah, he was the right? second best goalie. Exactly. And that has happened countless times in the past where yeah. you get to a big game seven and it's like you kind of got, you might have to win one nothing. And that's asking a lot. Yep. And it's unfair, but it's the position you chose. There's nothing and unfair about it. It's the nature of the it. beast. Yeah, you're a goaltender. Like yeah. it's the same thing with a quarterback, it's the same thing with a pitcher. Sometimes the other guy's great and you just got to be greater. And it's the nature of the beast and it's the only way your team's going to have a chance. But yeah, Samsonov goes tonight and. Um, the Leafs are in Washington tomorrow, and Washington will be coming back from their West Coast roadie last night where Alex Ovechkin hit 20 last night. He had two goals, pretty nice goals. Like, he's all of a sudden, I wouldn't say he's on a heater. Dude, I had a friendly wager with a prominent NHL goal scorer in about November where he thought Ovi was going to land around 26, and I said, absolutely no way. Absolutely no way. I think he was at five at the time. Mm -hmm. And his guess was 26, and he probably will end up with around 26 to maybe 30 if he goes he, on a heater. The way he's going right now, like he's, he is, that, that, what we're watching right now, that's Ovi in his prime. Like that is a one timer with heat. Yeah. And early on in the season, he was like fanning on those yeah. or missing the net or falling down, just doing un Ovi like things. Right. And I mean, he's up, he's up to 20, which again, e even if this is where, it, what it's going to be, 20, 25 goals, that's still a really good goal score in the National Hockey League. And dude, I'll tell you what, Hayes, you got to give that coach Carberry some flowers, man. They're, they're in the playoffs right now. They're in the playoffs. That team, their goal differential is like off the charts right now. It's like minus 30 or something, 28, and they're in the playoff picture right now. 
And I don't know if you guys watched them at the beginning of the season. They were the Washington terrible. Capitals looked so bad. They didn't even look like they belonged in the NHL. They were that bad. It was gross to watch. Yeah. And Carberry's done a good job there. I didn't know really what to think of him. If he just looked like a hot shot with nice clothes, if he knew what he was doing. But he looks like he deserves some flowers. Like he really looks like an NHL coach. And I'm happy for the guy. He gets some flowers. Yeah. Carberry. There's a stop and chat guy. I'd have a stop and chat with Spencer Carberry. But you're right. It's an interesting conundrum potentially for the, for the NHL right now because they knock out Detroit. And Detroit is an original six team, you know, hockey town, USA, incredible history. But the last five or six years have been really, really tough. Mm -hmm. And yeah. this was trending towards a really good season. The first time they were going to play playoff hockey in a new rink. Like it's been that long. That, that new rink's been around for a while. COVID hit. Detroit's been completely out of the mix. So I could understand why if you're the schedule makers, if you're the NHL, if you're a part of the marketing department, you're thinking this could be really good for business. Really? Versus Ovechkin? Well, that's what I'm getting to. The other option is Ovechkin, who I wasn't sure was going to play a playoff game again at any point in his career. Like between him and Sid, when they both Well, it certainly didn't year, look like at the beginning of the year. No. It's like your playoff career is basically over. And they missed a year ago, right? So you missed last year. This year, it didn't look much better. Again, the Kuznetsov story... Is, has come and gone. They just waved him and he's out. And got rid of him. Backstrom's retired, you know, and they found a way to patch it together. And Washington's in. And I, I think that would be the more compelling storyline, the idea of seeing Ovi back in the playoffs one more time. I know, but how compelling would it be if they go in and they get dummied four straight? Which they somebody? probably will. It's right. probably Boston, so how, Florida, well, New York. What's the compelling element to that is what you have to ask yourself. I, I guess you're. I guess what, what I'm saying I is... I think Detroit would be more compelling because I think Detroit could get on a heater and maybe upset somebody. I don't, I don't see that. I don't see a heater out of them. Like they're, look jo at, Hang on a sec. Jonas, who do you think has more capable of an upset, Detroit or Washington? Detroit. Thank you very much. <laughs> Based Come on, on what? dude. Based on what? What are you basing it on Washington? I'm not, I don't think Washington's going on a run. I don't think either yeah, of them Yeah, but if you're are. picking one team to upset. I'm picking upset, zero teams. You don't think Detroit could be upset Boston? Uh, obviously, anything can happen in the Stanley okay. Cup class. So can Washington. Yeah. Washington could as well. Do I feel that much better about Detroit doing it? No, I don't. Based on what history? Based on what in Detroit? I'm just Addie basing Kane. it on the heater they had a month and a half they ago. They did have one right where before they, where this. Where it was like, I wouldn't want to play Detroit right now. I hear you. That's what problem is, doing right now. Yeah, the problem is they fell off a cliff right after that where it's right. like, where the hell did that team go? They won, I think, seven in a row, and since then they're like one in nine. Like, it's just Isn't been a like, wild reversal. It's like Neilander said. Sometimes it's good, and then sometimes it's not so good. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, and he said that about the power play, and he's yeah, right. Yeah, well. Like, the power play's been top ten in the league all year for yeah. the Leafs. The penalty kill has been bottom 10 all year oh, for the yeah. Leafs. Yeah. Like it, we talked about it yesterday, the special teams, you know, and what you take out of the game against Carolina, the big picture, micro, macro stuff, blowing leads, end of period stuff. That's going to come and go over 82 games. Obviously, it can't happen in the playoffs. I think you downplayed crushing. that a little bit too much. I, why, why is that so significant? Why, why is it so significant? Because that the, the only way you win in the playoffs is by closing teams out. Okay, so can't do so it in the, the regular in, in season. Okay, but I they, don't know. They have done it though. Like it's ignorant. Have they? They've never closed out okay, games. Like they, they don't have wins. Let me look at their okay, record. Obviously, they have thirty-eight wins, Jones. Obviously, they have. Okay, but when it's happened as much as it has, that doesn't set off any alarms to for you? that extent. Were that 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 acute with like ten seconds left? It's not ten games? seconds. I counted it nine times. Final five minutes of regulation. Game time goal. Go ahead goal. That's a lot. No? Okay. You don't yeah. think that's for a team that's won one playoff series in twenty years? You Listen, don't think that that's like you, you could hmm. you could use the they've only won one playoff other series. Terribles like other good teams coughing up wins. No, like that. you're right. That's a, that's a fair question. The but NHL they're just not, not getting the benefit of the doubt because of their well, playoff how, history. Yes. How many times have they done it the the opposite way? How many times, a lot, including a lot, opening night when Matthews exactly. Okay. But that doesn't count. Okay. It can't do right. that in the playoffs. It doesn't okay. balance each other out. Right. <laughs> Listen, right. there, there's so many different things. That was things. your best point on the show <laughs> Thank you. for the last month. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, because they have had a lot of heroics late yeah. in games. Sure. It's it's playing with fire. It's not ideal. I'm not suggesting Given it is. Given their pool of talent, the fact that it has happened a lot in the regular season, a lot, I don't know if it's a lot. It's it No, but like, it seems like it seems a lot. Like a for lot. a playoff team, it for seems a like a lot. team that wants to win a cup. Yes, that doesn't have like a defense that you look at and you're like, man, that defense is great. But that's the bigger, that's the more, that that I think is the more glaring issue. But that's, that's 
tied to why it happens. Right? I suppose. Yeah, and I'm trying to figure out who should be on the ice, when they should be on the ice. I think there's a in a different world. Marner's clearly on the ice. Yarn Croak is probably on the ice. They weren't available to you. We'll see what happens come the playoffs. But yes, there have been examples of them blowing leads late and blowing games, and that's been a conundrum that they've had to face all year. The flip side of it is they have you know come back in games and found heroic moments and found ways to win late. Yeah. But the penalty kill has been consistently bad all season. Mm-hmm. Like I think they're ranked 24th in the league. That's that is not going to cut it. If if you are the 16th ranked penalty kill team in the playoffs, you're you're not going anywhere. And their penalty kill was bad in the playoffs last year. Yeah, and that's with the, better people. And a lot of those those goals against Carolina was you know some of it was Dude. old goalies, but you're talking man advantage. You're talking trying to get a kill. Yeah. So I I guess maybe we're arguing the same thing. Closing a game out, but also doing so where it's it's a bit of a circus on the ice because of the nature of the game. Yet, how many games do they have left? Sixteen. Like, at what point do you just realize it's this is probably it not, it's probably not going to change overnight? Yeah. Can it get incrementally better? They, yes, it that's better. Part of why I thought they should have done more at the deadline, but of course, hey, I'm leaving that be. So you think if Chris Tanev was out there on Saturday, they win that game? They, they're better. I don't know. Do they win that game, uh, Jonas? I don't know, man. All right. You see Easton Cowan, what's he up to? 35 games with a point? Yeah, that's the OHL. That's a pretty good stat, man. Good pretty league. good stat. I wouldn't be trading him for a, for a rental, personally. That's just me. Okay. All right, confirm and deny coming up. There we go. Look at Joe from the bridge. He's got the Easton. It's 34 games. My apologies. 34 games. And that's he, a pretty good streak. That's an incredible streak. Yeah. Like Stan Coven had 35, Bedard had 35, Sid had 37, Radulov with 50. Dude, that's disgusting. That's crazy. Like, he was in the queue. I don't remember where he played. but doesn't count then. Shouldn't even be up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Although Sid gets erased then, too, and Ehlers, because Ehlers was in Halifax. Anyway, we got confirmed tonight coming up. Uh, MJ will join us. Leafs Flyers tonight, which is on TSN. Overdrive continues, TSN 1050 and on TSN 4. I can neither confirm or deny that uh, that this is in fact a signal. Austin trades Andrew Raycroft to Toronto in exchange for the rights to Tuka Rask. It's been my honor and a privilege to serve as the general manager of the Toronto Maple Leafs Hockey Club. It's time for confirm or deny. Do you regret uh, giving all those gentlemen the no trades or no movement clauses? Well, I, I can neither confirm or deny that. I can't confirm or deny that. All right, Confirm or Deny, brought to you by Summit Ford and South Lake Ford Lincoln, where there are no trade deadlines. They'll take anything on trade and save you the HST. Visit summitford.com or southlakeford.com. Love it. All right, Confirm or Deny. You guys ready? Statements are made. We go around the table. We confirm it or we deny it. Confirm or Deny. Austin Matthews still has the inside track on being nominated for the Hart Trophy this season. Top three for the Hart. Top three for the Hart as of today? As of today, I'm going to deny that. I'm going to go McDavid, Kucherov, McKinnon as Mm -hmm. of today. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean... He would have to go on a monster heater to end the season to win this thing as of right now. I believe anyway. Yeah, which he's done before. And which he puts he's up done like before and he can and, do. Yeah. But I think it's all... I mean, Taylor Hall down the stretch a couple of years ago, the heater he went on meant so much to his yeah. Hart Trophy mm-hmm. winning because McKinnon, I think, had an unbelievable year that year. There was a bunch of other guys, and it was just like what he did down the stretch meant so much. So right now, I think it's McDavid, Mckinnon, Kucherov. So I'm denying it. There's only three guys so nominated. Read the correct? question. Yeah, yeah three guys. Confirm. Yeah, I'm confirming it. Hmm. I, thanks to you, I now keep a spreadsheet with ongoing updating my rankings for all the awards. See, there you go, Jonas. So I'm still on. What this. does that have to do with him? Well, we had he a, was, we argued we about had an argument. MVP, and he's like, "How do you not You'd know who you're voting?" He, he was like, "How do you not know who you're voting for MVP?" I'm like, "Well, I don't have to vote yet, but you're right." Anyway, I keep a, a chart now so of all the awards. Do you have Kucherov in the top three? No, you don't have Kucherov, dude. No, I'm sorry, you should lose your vote. 
Can okay. I just, can I just ask you something? That's how it all started, was Kucherov. But yeah. okay. anyway, go ahead. You how don't many, have Kucherov in your tough. Three. How many goals do you think Matthews is on pace for right now? 68. 68.5. Mm-hmm. Dude, I don't deal in point fives. I get it. <laughs> when was the last time someone scored 69 goals in a season? It's like Brett Hall or Mario, I think. It's, yes. So like, what, No, I understand that. But what does that have to do with Kucherov not being one of the other two? How is had Kucherov? this argument last time. All right. Okay, I, I, we don't need to rehash it. Dude, but that, I want to start it now. That's how it started. We got, like, as I said it as a matter of fact, well, obviously you got Kucherov, and he was like, no, I don't. And then that led us down a path of... Defensive value. Yeah, goals. there was a lot of different conversations. Oh, so now we're doing defensive value for yeah, Hart. Yeah, it turns out that sh- that kind of matters. Well, and, and from bit. that standpoint... I'm not doing this right now. <laughs> if you don't have Kucherov, you lose your vote. <laughs> well, from that standpoint, Matthews... His value is through the roof because of how good he is defensively and how good he is at checking and retrieving pucks and all that kind of stuff. I do think the goalposts move a lot, like with certain players. 100%. It moves all the time where all of a sudden it's this metric matters or that narrative matters. And a lot of it is narrative driven. And that's why I think Kucherov is in the top three because – you just mentioned Taylor Hall. He's playing that role effectively for Tampa. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's him and then, oh, it's it's okay. a drop-off. And they're barely in the playoffs. They're the second wild card team. They get in. It's They can thank 86 for getting them in. They Damn can right. thank Nikita Kucherov Damn for dragging right. them in the playoffs. And that power play. Which he is the guy. Con, and, and you know who quarterbacked the greatest power play in history last year? McDavid. Connor McDavid. Did anyone say, well, you know, yeah, power play, man. Different. Why is it different? McDavid literally was he, is, he was the catalyst of that power play. I think he had like had a hundred power play goals. Points. I understand that. That's a great season. <laughs> I'm not disputing that McDavid should have won the heart. All right, I'm, we, I'm just saying I'm Kucherov afraid. should be in the top I, three. I, I'm afraid to leave at 530. I know. It's, this thing might turn into a WWF Kumite. <laughs> 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 All right, what was the question again? So you have Matthews inside track in the top three. Right now. Yeah, I'm going to confirm it as well. I have Kucherov, I have McKinnon, Kucherov as a clear-cut one-two. Yeah, clear absolutely. cut. You're clear having cut. some recency bias, I think, is what's happening. In, in terms friend. of McDavid? No, in, in terms, terms of, of the Matthews. other guys. Like, if, yeah, if he Matthews slowed has, down if recently. he has 70 goals, are you going to say, nah? It's going to be hard because like Kucherov could have 145 points. Right. How do I yeah, McKinnon, the guy that you just mentioned, who's not in your vote? You get five places. He'll get a five, but not in the top three, though. That's what I'm saying. Like maybe I don't know. Of, it, <laughs> no, I know you'll figure that out. It's Next your question. Vote. There's more here, though. There's way more to get into. Maybe I'll just give you my ballot, and you can fill it out. I was asked to vote a couple of years ago, years ago, and then it just never materialized. I wonder why. I don't know. <laughs> Who sent you in the, like you were talking I'm not, to someone? I'm not saying who brought it to my attention, okay. but it was brought up but never came to fruition. All right. It seems like everybody else votes except me and you. Yeah, you and I, we don't vote on no, anything. We're just, just a couple <laughs> of stooges, I guess. Just we don't writers. vote on no. anything. It's just the writers. No, I know, but there's other awards. There's, yeah, there's the like Canadian GMs. Athlete of the Year, the uh, GM. There's, there's a million It doesn't matter. We, people don't take me and him seriously <laughs> enough where we can vote. We're just a couple of stooges That's on the exactly radio. That's exactly it. They look at us and they're like, absolutely not. Uh, yeah. we, we cannot allow those two to vote it would soil the whole process <gasps> if we were affiliated with your vote yeah. it ruins it yeah according to many people which i think is shameful i think you should have your own award show that's what we do we do the lou brown award exactly <laughs> <laughs> which is more embarrassing and then people watch that and they say that's why they don't vote exactly the lou brown awards every single year there you go all right we kind of addressed this earlier in the hour but let's rifle through this quick confirm or deny Ilya samson deserves to be the game one starter deserves to be game one at this point i'm saying deny because who the hell knows what he's going to look like in a month when the playoffs start and that's all that's going to matter whoever is good a week before the playoffs is going to get the nod that's what it's going to come down to well let me ask you this This is an insane question who's been the best goalie for the leafs this season Martin Jones. Martin Jones. <laughs> Isn't that nuts? Marty Jones was Isn't red hot. Isn't it crazy hot. how that That's guy crazy. saved everyone's bacon and he's just not even in the I, fold I know. Anymore? They don't even talk about him anymore. Like, Keith just basically said, we, we, I know exist. we have three guys, but we have two. Yeah. Pretend we have two. He's yeah. basically Garrett Sparks. Like, he's he's crazy. Jerry Sparks. Like, go go practice with he's somebody else. practice. Right. Although, Joseph Wall, prior to his injury, was really good. He was like... Seven, eight, nine starts. I know, like but it was, it was still very, very impressive. Sure. Very impressive. All right, Jonas, how would you answer that? I don't deserves. know how to answer Samson that. Samson deserves. That today? Yeah, as yes. of, I guess as of today. Got to be today. I'm with him, deny. Mm-hmm. It's like really impressive. You're right. This this stretch, 
since he came back. Like he was literally out of the league. Yeah, it's crazy. It's not it's just a like, remarkable redemption right? like, story. Not just like he was out of the league, yeah. waved, and now he's back. Credit to him, like, and credit to their staff. Like Curtis Sanford spent a lot of time mm-hmm. with him. Um, Tree Living, obviously, for coming up with that plan. Incredible or, job. Incredible. Uh, but yeah, I got to deny. Yeah, I, I'm going to make it a three pack. I'll deny it as well. It's it's basically it's Samsonov right now. Not by default, because he's he's played well. Like, he has played well. His numbers aren't, like, amazing. They're not great, but he's been okay. But Joseph Wall has not... Well, I think Wall had an opportunity, and it was asking a lot for a young guy coming off a pretty major injury to grab the bull by the horns, but he had that chance. Like, he had a chance to show up. If he went, if he stands on his head against Boston, yeah. it's his net now. Or it's, a, it's like a competition. Or it's more of a competition. But as of now, I think it's Samson by default as opposed to... Uh, because he deserves it. Confirm and deny. The Canadian team least likely to go on a long playoff run is the Vancouver Canucks. I'm oh. denying that. How could you say with that goaltender? They've been struggling a little bit. They haven't been the same Vancouver Canucks at the beginning of the season. Mm-hmm. But you get bubble Demko cooking. Why would they not be able to go on a long run? I completely deny that. I think it's preposterous. <laughs> the problem, though, is you got to pick someone. So who is it? Hey, there's four teams. Like, That's the point. The Jets, they have Hellebuck. Are you picking uh, Edmonton? They've got some good players. Are you picking the Leafs? I'm not. This question's not <laughs> asking to pick someone. It's, it's just, just about, about Vancouver. Vancouver. Like now, Demko's hurt right Smart. now. Demko's hurt. It's only supposed to be two or three weeks, but I think it's a knee. That's concerning to me. That's troubling. That is troubling. Uh, I'll confirm this. I'm going to confirm it because they. They're, oh be, Because they're someone's got to someone's got to have this answer. You know who they would face right now? Vegas. Vegas. <laughs> exactly. That's another oh. part of it. Who well, are they going to play? Uh, let me ask you, like. As Vegas is the Stanley Cup champions, that's true. But why would they scare anyone right now the way they're playing? Point. They won't Fair right point. now. They will if Stone and Hurdle and the boys come <laughs> flying out and everyone's healthy and everyone's feeling good. And don't yeah. forget, as much as I have respect for everyone in that organization, they got to get there They first. do. There's no guarantees. No. There's, right. there's no guarantees. Points. I mean, listen, I'm not, I'm not going to say I'm rooting against them to make it because I, I have come full circle on Vegas. I have such... An immense amount of respect for the way they run their operation. Just going. It, it's it. incredible what they've accomplished, but it would also be an unbelievable story to see them miss. Like if they missed and they went out and made all those, like Hannafin would get traded there and not make the playoffs. Now he probably signs in July, but if he leaves, all of a sudden it goes from, wow, I love it. They're all in to that's a perfect example of. You don't really know what you did at the deadline until the season comes to an end. Of course. Because that will completely flip to buffoonery. Yeah. You traded multiple picks to get a guy that walked for nothing. You didn't even make the playoffs. But uh, I'm going to confirm this in terms of Vancouver because of their, their history more than anything. They, they don't have a playoff history. You mentioned the bubble. That, that's a totally different world. Like That was three years ago. No fans. Edmonton, Toronto. I think it's a tough question because I, I think you could argue the Leafs. I think you could argue Winnipeg. If Edmonton plays Vegas in the first round, if Vegas gets healthy and gets hot and gets in, they could still secure that third seed and play Edmonton as well. It's no guarantee Edmonton gets out of the first round. Yeah. But I'll confirm it. So wait, are we saying they're the least likely, least likely to go, to go on, go on, on a long, long run, run Vancouver? Yeah, I think I have to confirm it. Of the, the Canadian teams that are going to make it, aren't they the one that you look at and you're like, huh? Eh. Kind of, you Not think for it's me. But like flash in the pan. So, They've been a great so then, story. They've been a great team all year. Jets, Leafs, Oilers, Canucks. How do you rank them? I go just Edmonton just F- one. Just an FYI here for seventy percent of the league or the season, these guys were in first place. Yes. Absolutely. First place in the league, and now all are. of a sudden there are a bunch of turkeys out they're there. They're not. Oh, they're behind like New York and, and Boston and Florida. Other people. Yeah. It's also listen, they surprised a lot of people with what happened this year. Yeah. Sure. Be- the beginning of the year. He's no gonna win coach of the year, and he should talk it. Yeah. Paul that Maurice was, might have something to Paul say. Paul Maurice that. might. And I'm telling you, that guy in Boston, I, I say it every two Dude, and a half he weeks. Should, he should be strongly considered. hundred. Why Jim Monk? He's doing a better job this yes. year than he did Fair. last year. Yes. Fair. And that, again, it's narrative-driven. It's usually the new guy. I'd love to see a guy win coach of the year back-to-back seasons. I, I agree with you. Like I And I think there should have been years where, like, John Cooper did that in Tampa. Why wouldn't he No kidding. That? You know, yeah. like, why wouldn't that have happened? Did he win when they had all the, like, that yeah, crazy they, season? Yeah, that 62-win season, he won. Okay. I believe he won. I mean... I'm pretty sure it was a scenario much like Montgomery last year. It was like so much I better than everyone I, else. You had to get it. Let me see. But, I mean, this is going to be a big part of the conversation in the next month, like ranking these four Canadian teams, where I feel good about all four teams having a chance at doing something. 
Like, I really do. I, he I, didn't win. He didn't win when they no. got 62 wins? What year was that? Was that 2019? That was 1920. No, Barry Trotz won. No, Bruce Cassidy won. Or no, it was, it was maybe 1819, Jonas, because it was before He's COVID. never won. John Cooper's never won the Jack Adams. Never won. So they That's won 62 insane. games and Coop <laughs> didn't win? How is that possible? Who won that year? Let's make sure we have the year. It was 1819. It was before COVID. Yeah, Barry Trotz. The New Where? York Islanders. See, that was a narrative thing. He had just got there. He won the cup the year before. That's, the Islanders were a mess. He drags them into the playoffs. That award should be. That's like what Tortorella is going to possibly get this year. He is not winning the coach he of the year right now. He's not anymore. And, and how does he? We got to talk about John that. Couturier. We got to talk. We're in the midst of confirm and deny. Yeah. We'll get into it with Johnny at five. The guy was named captain thirty-four days ago. Yes. And let's go through the timeline. You just acted like a donkey down in Tampa. I was at the game. You got suspended for two games. There was no response. There was no, let's win this for torts. Let's get back on track. And then they come back and he scratches the captain. That is a garbage. That's a misplay right there. Yeah. You've got to have some kind of alignment in the organization where the messaging goes from the coach to the captain to other players. How's a guy going to go up and talk to Couturier if he's not even dressed tonight? He's scratched. Couturier might want to pull a young guy aside and say, hey, you know, like Torx mm. is looking for some intensity. And the guy would be like, you're not even playing. You're a I healthy know, scratch, you crazy. bum. Exactly, and what is he, twenty nine or something? Like, it's not like this is a forty two year old been around forever. Hey, Dude, my there's bad some knees. guys that need the benefit of the doubt, and Sean Couturier is one of them. I know you got to hold everyone accountable, but light his ass up and then start him at center ice against Austin Matthews. Yeah, that's how you handle that situation to scratch him. Crazy. That, that is a ridiculous I, play. I, I agree. It's it's power hungry, man. That's Torts though. That's him. He, I know he, he's got to do it. You know, if it starts going sideways, someone's got to pay the price. Can't be him. Not John Tortorella's fault. It's somebody else's fault. Always, ha it's always the case. It's always the way he operates. All right, what do we have here? Uh, all right, the Ra the Raptors, the Raptors, <laughs> the Raptors. What do they have? Fourteen games left. Confirm or deny they will not win more than three games the rest of the season. Dude, come on, they're gonna win more than three games. I know. Do you know how bad they are right now, dude. I do you know get how it. awful they are. You they talked might be the about worst that team lineup. The that, that lineup that was on the weekend, yes. insane. Legitimately one of the five to ten worst lineups, I think, in Raptor history. Now, again, Scotty's hurt. Pirtle's hurt. R.J. Barrett's got you know his serious personal issues. His brother passing away. He's not playing. I don't know when he's going to return. He may not return again this year. Mm -hmm. And those are three big, big players. But that's the NBA in a nutshell. If you miss out on three starters who play big minutes who are really good players... Your toast. You're, You're going to get a massive trouble. team heavily in that comes for a night out in Toronto and there's a Sunday afternoon well, game. You're going to get some. Are That's the question. You're confirming that they will wait, will not win. Will so deny. it's the. I'm saying deny. they're going to win more than three games. Okay, so you're denying that they won't. Denying. <sighs> so they play Washington twice. That Washington is, is worse. They, than they just are. lost to Detroit though, Joe. Yeah, they're not. Good. It's not like they're good. They play Washington twice. They play Brooklyn. Washington's terrible. I see like four games that they can win. Washington twice. Brooklyn twice. <sighs> they're not beating Brooklyn twice. Not with that lineup. Then they're not beating. Then they're not getting it. But that's what I'm saying. My new favorite player in the NBA, who's on team my guy, Anthony Edwards. I love that guy. You see that dunk what? last night? Yeah. That he was sick. And when he first got drafted, they said this guy's focused. He doesn't really talk about basketball. He plays video game. That guy's a gamer. He's man. a machine, he's man. A stud. He's a machine. He had a quote. Um, Look at this dunk, man. Oh, that is disgusting. And he talks about it. his finger. Too. Yeah, I know. That was probably not the greatest decision. But he said after the game where he's like, like he's just a, he's a dog. Like he's a guy, you always use that term. Like he's got a dog in him. Like after the game, he was saying, like I can sleep well at night knowing that like I am going to put this team on my back. I am going to drive things. I am going to show up every single night. Like he is, he's a throwback. Like that's basically he's awesome. He is. Man. He's a throwback. And Minnesota's legit, dude. How many guys in the NBA would have even come back in the same game from that injury? Well, dislocated finger. Like Anthony Davis oh, would have been gone for. He'd two be weeks. gone until next season. Yes. Yeah. You, he'd be done for the rest of the year. Uh, but like I, I can't. I hate to be a hater, but I'm going to confirm uh, confirm that I don't think they get more than three wins. Sacramento tomorrow night, no. Oklahoma City Friday, no. Give them one of the Washingtons, okay? Yeah. You know, can they squeak? They'll, they'll surprise a team here. They're, they go down to Miami and Brooklyn at the end of the year. I don't know. I just, Scotty's not coming back. I don't know what's going on with Pirtle. I don't know what's going on with RJ Barrett. If the three of them are not going to play the rest of the year, I don't see how that lineup wins four games. Well, and don't you start 
resting even the guys you have. Well, and that's another thing. Point. Now you've tanked. Yeah, it's I'm going to confirm pick. it. They might lose everyone. You might as well tank. Like, you, you've tanked you already. You want to keep your pick. In Memphis, you're fighting with Memphis to make sure you stay in the top six. You might as well yeah. basically lose every game. It's a horrible mentality. Play the 905. One, yeah. I mean, I, I think that's basically where it's going. It's like play the bench, play the minutes, focus on fundamentals. Shots for Grady Dick. Might as well play them. Like, play them. Yeah. Start them, play them, yeah. get them shots, get them minutes. Uh, confirm and deny. Russell Wilson will start more games for the Steelers next season than Justin Fields. Oh, oh, oh that's a good one. Man, that's a wild and wacky scene down there. Bringing in <laughs> both of those both guys. Both those guys. I saw a stat yesterday. The two quarterbacks who have lost more games than anyone else in the NFL the last two seasons are on the same team. Justin Fields and Russell Wilson. Fields has lost 20, and Wilson's lost 19. Where does this, like, I would take Rudolph over both of those guys. Wouldn't <laughs> That's you? Call. Yeah. I, I mean, sure. I'm not I'm not a Kenny Pickett fan. I don't think Pickett's got a, yeah. a future in the NFL as a starter, and no, that's why they moved on pick. him. It's a brutal it, pick. It, it was. And Rudolph, I don't know, he's probably he's a backup. But this is so desperate for the Steelers. I understand why they're desperate, because of the nature of the position. But it's the old guy who doesn't have it anymore, and the young guy that never's had it, it's like... And you're going to pit them against each other? I'm going to deny that Russell Wilson's going to start. I think Justin Fields, maybe it's a wake-up call, and he comes alive under Tomlin, mm -hmm. and, and, and maybe he's... He's got become, talent. Dude, like, he's got talent. And I base a lot of it on Orlovsky's take. He has... He, Orlovsky has some, from ESPN, has some belief in Justin He likes Fields. him. Yeah, he does. Yeah. He likes his talent, his raw talent. Yep. And he thinks with some some proper work and coaching that he, he could be a guy in the NFL. So I'm going to deny this and say that Fields... Fields, Fields plays more. He's okay. the starter. I would say Fields would be the starter opening day. I'm with him. Yeah, I, I think, like, look at him. He's, a, what is he, 6'3", 6'4", yeah. 2", like, he's, he's a young monster. guy. He's got he talent. Can run. Like he, has a, he has an arm. He's not accurate, but he has an arm. Like, mm -hmm. that situation in Chicago was such a tire fire. He, he did inherit Could anyone a succeed in that? I don't know. It's worth the chance. We know Russell Wilson is what he is, don't we? I think so. I mean, he, the reason I'm going to confirm this, that Wilson will start more games, is because Tomlin is like an old school. Dude, old school, when, the, when you're under the gun, it's out the window. Yeah, I hear I mean, you. And look what happened with, like, Roethlisberger at the end. Didn't he stop? Actually, I guess he did. He kept he kind of playing end. him. Like, Tomlin's a defensive coach. They make the playoffs every year, even with quarterbacking that's yeah. this bad. But their defense is going to be stout. He's going to be a good coach. I just I see him looking at it like I'd prefer to have a, a veteran that I can trust. Like, I see Tomlin thinking that way. Fair. Doesn't mean it'll be the right thought, but I could see him thinking, I can trust Russ. Wasn't that the same thing in Denver last year? Well, the, the difference is Peyton showed up, and Peyton didn't want Russell Wilson. Right. Like, it was pretty clear from day one. He wanted nothing to do with Wilson. He was going to get rid of Wilson, and that's exactly what happened. Where this is different, where Tomlin's bringing Wilson in basically for free and saying, why not? And he was a great quarterback. A long Three, time. four years ago, yeah. but he was. And Fields never has been. He's got potential. I think that'll be a real battle, though, in camp. I mean, that's going to be an interesting storyline. They don't do that down in Pittsburgh. Like, it's usually, it's Roethlisberger for 20 years. And now, all of a sudden, you got two guys coming in. Interesting histories. We'll see what they've got. All right, Confirm and Deny was brought to you by Summit Ford and South Lake Ford Lincoln, where there are no trade deadlines. They'll take anything on trade and save you the HST. Visit SummitFord.com or South Lake Ford. Dot com. All right, confirm and deny after dark. we got Keegan Matheson coming up, some injury news on the Jays, and some news on the opening day starter. We'll tell you about that. Mike Johnson coming up. Leafs Flyers tonight down in Philly. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on the TSN app. All right, Mike Johnson coming up. Keegan Matheson down in Dunedin. Jays news is starting to pour in. We're getting close to go time here. And they announced the opening day starter will be Jose Barrios. Which... Says a couple things. One, Gosman clearly is not prepared to pitch, which is very concerning. I, I think he's going to be pitching a side session like today or in the next couple of days anyway. Dude, a couple of innings. What about Manoa? He hasn't thrown a baseball since I left for a week. Yeah. Well, since he had that blow up first start, then he had his shoulder issue, and now he just is nowhere to be found. And he's just doing side sessions. Like he's not getting in games. Where does he's that not making him? the team? Well, he's out. Like he's out, you're you're out of the you're out of the rotation. You know, we talked about it yesterday with Votto and being like a veteran player trying to make a comeback. If you're injured and you're not involved, teams have to look past you. It's no different with younger guys.
who were trying to make the team, and that's what Manoa was trying to do. He didn't have anything guaranteed when he showed up in in the spring, yeah. and he's he's pitched one time in a live game, and it was a disaster. And now he's hurt, and he's nowhere close to having any type of arm strength where you could possibly put him into a real game. I don't I don't know if we ever see him again with the Jays. My I concern mean, it's crazy, is that but, a, that that appearance he had where he was hitting those batters, it spooked him. And he was like, I don't know, man. I think it spooked the hell out of him. Yeah. If he's not injured, <laughs> that could be Sam Darnold. I'm seeing ghosts. Yeah. I mean, that's a reality of sports that happens a lot. Like, guys, you lose confidence. You lose faith. You, you lose it. You get scared that it's that your career is at stake. I mean, that's really what it can be is that you have an outing like that that he understood was so focused upon. Like, so many eyes were on that start and he hits three guys. It was and a he, mess. And he got hit a lot. Loud like, doubles. Loud doubles. And yeah, his velocity was up a little bit, but whatever. But yeah, it very well, like I, I don't dispute he had something going on, but he went for an MRI. I believe it came back clean. How much of it is he's afraid to even try to perform because he's worried if it goes the wrong way, that's it. And if that's the case, you're in big trouble. It's Ben Simmons. Right. right? Like, yeah, but Ben Simmons had a contract that was paying him that's five sheets yeah, a year. Like Ben a, Simmons again this yeah. year was like, I'm not playing. He's well, not he, playing right now. He's not he playing. Try, but he's hurt. I know, Dude, but, he but he's always hurt. hurt. He's hurt. always and yeah. it's always nah, just not like back. Yeah, nah, not feeling it after playing the night before. Yeah. Like Simmons is clearly he just doesn't want to play. Like there's something no, going on. He there. lost his confidence. Yeah, he can't play. He doesn't want to play. It's too bad. It's sad. It's it is embarrassing, man. It's, it's embarrassing for him. But it's a reality of They're life. Humans, right? Yeah, exactly. It happens. And with Manoa, that's concerning. With Gosman, it's concerning. Now Romano's a bit banged up. Swanson's a bit banged up. Not great. We'll see. Get into that in the next hour. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on the TSN app.